Welcome to Hypercoagulable States. In this video, we will focus on protein C and protein S deficiency. In the next few minutes, we'll discuss the following take-home points. Protein C and protein S are endogenous anticoagulants that inhibit factors 5 and 8. Protein C and S deficiencies primarily cause venous thromboembolism. Acquired protein C and S deficiency can be seen in acute thrombosis and liver disease. Let's look at protein C and S in action. To do this, we'll briefly introduce a simplified version of the coagulation cascade, starting with intrinsic pathway factor, factor 9A. Factor 9A works with its cofactor, factor 8A, to cause the activation of factor 10 to 10A. Then 10A works with its cofactor, factor 5A, to convert prothrombin, or 2, to thrombin, or activated factor 2. Thrombin then cleaves fibrinogen to fibrin. Now keep your eye on thrombin. Natural antithrombotic processes begin with thrombomodulin binding to thrombin. The thrombin thrombomodulin complex binds to protein C. Protein C then becomes activated to activated protein C. The cofactor for activated protein C is protein S. Protein S works with protein C to inhibit factors 5A and 8A. When everything works as it should, the cofactor activity of factors 5A and 8A is stopped. However, when there is protein C and S deficiency, when factors 5A and 8A are not inhibited and instead remain constitutively active, in this state there is increased thrombosis risk. Now let's focus on hereditary protein C deficiency. Most patients with inherited protein C deficiency are heterozygous. Inherited protein C deficiency can be subdivided into two types. Type 1 deficiency is a quantitative deficiency due to reduced protein C levels. Type 2 deficiency is a qualitative deficiency due to reduced protein function. Type 1 deficiency is more common than type 2, but between the two types, clinical differences are not present. The most common findings of hereditary protein C deficiency include venous thromboembolism, other thrombotic complications in reported include stroke and arterial thrombosis. Patients with protein C deficiency can also develop warfarin-induced skin necrosis, and babies with severe protein C deficiency at birth can develop neonatal purpura fulminans. There are a few conditions that can lead to acquired protein C deficiency. These include liver disease, disseminated intravascular coagulation, uremia, acute infection, cancer and cancer therapy such as l and vitamin K antagonists or vitamin K deficiency. Additionally, unfractionated or low molecular weight heparins and fondoparinox may interfere with clotting-based protein C assays. Next, let's discuss hereditary protein S deficiency. The classic type of inherited protein S deficiency is type 1 deficiency. Type 1 deficiency is a quantitative deficiency with reduced total protein S, free protein S, and protein S function, so all are decreased. The second is type 2 deficiency. Type 2 deficiencies are rare qualitative defects in which there is normal total and free protein S, but the protein S function is reduced. The third is type 3 deficiency. Type 3 deficiency is another quantitative deficiency in which there is normal total protein S, but both free protein S and protein S function are reduced. Let's discuss the clinical manifestations of hereditary protein S deficiency. The most common manifestation is venous thromboembolism. In addition to deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, thrombosis has also been reported in the axillary, mesenteric, and cerebral veins. In newborns, Protein S deficiency can cause neonatal purpura fulminans, typically due to homozygous deficiency. In patients on warfarin, protein S deficiency can cause warfarin-induced skin necrosis. Protein S deficiency is also thought to cause stroke and arterial thrombosis, but the data has not borne out in large epidemiologic studies. As with protein C deficiency, there is also a number of causes for acquired protein S deficiency. Protein S levels can be falsely low in the setting of acute thrombosis, pregnancy, 
or oral contraceptive use, disseminated intravascular coagulation, liver disease, and vitamin K antagonist use or with vitamin K deficiency. Additionally, functional assays for protein S can be affected by direct oral anticoagulants. In summary, we have learned that protein C and protein S work together to inhibit factors 5 and 8. Protein C and or S deficiency primarily cause venous thromboembolism. And acquired deficiency can be seen with acute thrombosis, liver disease, and other causes. This ends our discussion on hypercryolable states, a focus on both protein C and S deficiencies.